Interruptions to water supply in part of Hauteng have seen an increase in the past few weeks, leaving numerous residents disgruntled and in some instances unsafe. From Soweto to Santin, residents regularly bemoan the intermittent lag of the basic human right that is access to running water. Bahai to good evening. My name is Tabo Molokwane. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, we take a look at the ongoing water shortages that continues to plague uh, not just Gauteng, but the country at large. Now, joining us to have the conversation is Rent Water spokesperson Makinosi Maru uh, to help us to make sense of the current situation and explore possible solutions. She's joining us via Zoom. Makinosi, good evening. Uh, thanks uh, for joining us. Welcome to Soweto Today. Good evening, Tab, and good evening to your listeners and your viewers. Much appreciated. Uh, you know, Makinosi, I, I want us to get down to the basics for clarity's sake, you know, to make it clear when it comes to water supply in Johannesburg, what is rainwater's role and how different, uh, how is it different from uh, Johannesburg water? Who is responsible for what? Because, you know, sometimes people get confused on who does what and who does what, if I may put it that way. Maybe just take us through that. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I think it's very important to explain and clarify the role that we play as rainwater. So rainwater, we are a bulk water supply. So we supply various municipalities. We supply 18 municipalities with water. So municipalities are our customers. And then customers, I mean, our customers who are municipalities will then supply water to the residents. So that means we purify water. Then obviously it goes through our pipelines. It goes into municipal reservoirs. From there, the municipalities will channel it to go to a resident's house. Mm. Um, um, you know, as you are explaining, uh, you know, more of uh, where we're getting our water and, uh, uh, you know, the process from the source to our taps there. I want us to look at uh, the current challenge, uh, particularly looking at, uh, uh, you know, uh, as we are seeing interruptions, uh, water interruptions occurring so frequently and over so many different areas at once. Mm -hmm. I... Actually, what, what happened, how it started the, the, the water challenge, we were experiencing high consumption of water. Because remember, when we moved from one season into the other, so when we moved from winter into spring, uh, the consumption went high. Obviously, people are using more water, filling up their swimming pools, sprinklers, and obviously, uh, we're using water for their lawns washing their cars. I mean, we know how many car washes we have. So also remember, there are also leaks within municipal uh, pipelines. So we have uh, experienced high, high, high consumption in terms of ex as compared to, to what we're able to supply. So that's where the problem started. Mm. Uh, I mean, what do you make of uh, a statement that was made by the Deputy uh, Minister of Water and Sanitation saying that, look, uh, you guys as rainwater and uh, several municipalities that uh, you are providing services to are to blame for the current situations that are faced by various areas in the province. You know what, I think what, what Minister was saying, it was more of we should stop blaming each other and pointing fingers and ensure that people do get water. Sometimes we, we, we tend to forget that people don't really Really, I don't want to say they don't care, but people just want water. It does mm -hmm. not matter whether it's rainwater who's supplying or it's somebody else. Somebody says, says, I just want water if I open my tap. So minister was saying, work together, stop blaming each other, take overall responsibility, whether it's rainwater and municipality, work, working together. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're working with the metros, we're working with other municipalities. We're working very closely. Every morning we have meetings with metros in terms of looking at the water supply, where the need is, which system is doing well, which system is not doing well. I mean, you are right saying that uh, the blame game, obviously, it won't assist the people because ultimately uh, the issue is about the water. Everyone wants to see water, you know, running from their t taps there. But maybe if you can explain to us why it seems particular areas such as the south and western areas of Johannesburg, uh, they seem to be hit more regularly, uh, often going days without any water. What might be the problem in this regard? 
look, it depends. There are high lying areas. So high lying areas, obviously, they would be the last one to get water because remember the, the low lying areas would get water. So, but also municipalities, I think they're able to explain that when they get water into their reservoir, precisely where are they channeling the water? So I think it's a question of high lying areas and low lying areas. But also you will recall that minister uh, came up with a, a, a directive that we must introduce what we call water shifting. I don't know if you did hear that, yeah. but we introduced a, a term called water shifting. So we are implementing water shifting. What does it mean? It simply means we are shifting water from one system to the other. So we have four booster stations as run water. So we are shifting water from one system that is healthy or healthier into a system that is struggling to ensure that there is equitable uh, supply of water and there is balance in terms of where we supply water. I mean, obviously, uh, the issue of uh, power cuts is also not making things easier for, for, for you guys because uh, somewhere, somehow, when, uh, you know, there is a power trip there, uh, somewhere, somehow, your plants are also affected in this regard. Makinosi, I'm not sure if you can hear me there. Um, Makinosi uh, Maru, who is uh, the rainwater spokesperson, uh, joining us, talking more about uh, some of the challenges that they are facing uh, as rainwater. As we're seeing some of the areas in Johannesburg are actually experiencing water cast. We will continue that discussion after the break uh, with her. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for joining us. My name is Tabo Malukwane. Before the ad break, we started the conversation on water supply interruptions and broke down the current situation and why is it that way. Still joining us via Zoom is Rainwater Spokesperson Makinosi Maru uh, to continue the conversation. Makinosi, thanks very much for staying on. I mean, before the ad break, I wanted to just get a sense from you on how the you know the constant power cuts load shedding if i may put it that way is also affecting your plants i mean obviously somewhere somehow it's it's, it's affecting how uh, you know uh, things are run at various plants that you have across the province right uh, it's it's very important for for us to have power in order for us to pump water so we have entered into, into an agreement with power suppliers that we we are we get an exemption from load shedding at our primary that's where we purify water and at our secondary booster stations that's where the four booster stations that i was talking about so we we do not get load shedding obviously from from these two power state power stations or plants uh, but at our our tertiary pump stations we do get load shedding however we do have generators in place so they kick in as soon as there's load shedding but having said that, Tabo, from time to time, we do experience power dips and power trips. So a power dip that, that can last for 30 minutes, it can set us back for about three or four hours. So remember now, obviously, the reservoirs will start running low if, because of that power dip. But with regards to load shedding, there is an agreement with power suppliers. Mm. Because I was about to ask that, uh, you know, since there's been talks of, uh, uh, you know, exemptions when it comes to certain uh, areas or certain resources, um, as rainwater, are you not in talks with uh, the energy department, just the electricity department, they just, you know, to exempt you guys from uh, having those uh, uh, being affected by load shedding. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, I can still hear you. Um, I was just saying, um, um, are you guys in talks with the electricity department in order to maybe get some sort of an exemption uh, so that you might not have those uh, power cuts, uh, uh, you know, not affecting the uh, power supply of, I mean, the supply of water? Makinosi, I'm not sure if you're still with me. We are in conversation with Makinosi Maru, who is a uh, rainwater spokesperson, just trying to get a sense of uh, currently the situation there. Uh, I believe she's uh, still back with us. Uh, Makinosi, I'm not sure if you can hear me, but I was talking more about the issue of uh, exemptions. Are you in talks with the electricity department? Maybe somewhere, somehow to get exempted so that uh, you know there is constant supply of water. 
Uh, yes, no, we do have an agreement. As I was saying, the agreement is there, it's in place already, just for our primary and our secondary. So primary, that's where we purify water in Ferenacheng and Sekerbosh. And at uh, our uh, se secondary booster stations, that's where we boost, obviously, that's where we get water and we, we supply water to various municipalities. There is an agreement in place. So we do not get load shading, as I indicated, but we do get power trips and power dips from time to time. But in terms of agreement, we do have an agreement with power suppliers. Mm. Um, I, I mean, also, what has government done, you know, already to help rectify the situation? Has it been adequate enough? I mean, you are saying that, uh, you know, the deputy minister was saying that you guys need to come together with municipalities, make sure that uh, you work and resolve the current situation, uh, you know, the current issues that are faced by various areas there. Uh, are they really assisting you as rainwater? Uh, the Department of Water and Sanitation is providing leadership, I must say, Minister Senzo Mkunu and uh, Deputy Minister Mashabo. They are really providing leadership in terms of really engaging communities. I don't know if you've seen uh, for the past two weeks, uh, both the minister and, and the, the, the two deputy ministers, they've been engaging communities just to understand exactly where are the issues, where are the challenges, and they've also clearly uh, requested or gave us a directive as rainwater to work closely with municipalities to ensure that residents do get water. We're going to take a quick shot ad break, uh, still trying to figure out exactly what is the situation there. We're coming back after this, do stay with us. Welcome back uh, to Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We continue the conversation about the ongoing water crisis in parts of Houghton province and other parts of the country. And now uh, we want to explore the possible way forward, uh, you know, in, in terms of finding out the solutions to this crisis. Now still joining us via Zoom is Maganosi Maru, who is the spokesperson for Ren Water. Maganosi, I mean, we've looked at the current situation and gotten a better understanding of what is happening now. Uh, you know, I want us to look at how we can move forward. Firstly, what are the cost implications that are involved in rectifying the situation at present? Obviously, uh, you guys must feel a pinch in your pockets. Of course, that's, that's, I mean, that's our business. I mean, supplying water is our business. So, of course, there, there is a, that pinch that we are feeling. Also, talking about a pinch, some municipalities are still owing rainwater money, but rainwater is continuing to supply water because water is an, it's, it's an important resource. And then secondly, we are also moving ahead with water shifting, as I indicated, where we are balancing the system to ensure that there is equitable supply of water. And the third one, we are pleading with residents who have water to continue using water sparingly and also reminding residents that uh, municipalities are on level one up until the end of summer, 31st of March. So uh, you are not allowed to water your lawn. It must be uh, between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. So around that time, you are not allowed during the day because remember, water evaporates. So if you have to really uh, use your sprinkler or you have to use a hose for your for your lawn, it must be before 6 a.m or after 6 p.m. That's part of a uh, level one. So we are saying to residents and consumers, please, please use water sparingly mm. because this is a peak and a demand for us. Yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 wanted, I wanted to ask you particularly on the issue that you mentioned about municipalities that are failing to actually rectify uh, the, 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 their, uh, you know, their balances with you guys. So, um, um, have you find maybe some sort of um, uh, a plan in order to make sure that you'll be able to, uh, you know, get the money that's owed to you? Because it seems like the debt is, is, is really growing by, by years or by months, if I may put it that way. Uh, we, we are finding each other. Yes, there are still municipalities who are behind, but we are continuing to engaging. Some of them obviously are coming forth, uh, obviously settling their debt. But we have those intergovernmental relation forums, so we are engaging and we are really finding each other. Mm. Uh, how long will it take uh, before we start seeing some kind of normality as far as uh, water supply is concerned? 
Uh, it shouldn't it shouldn't take long it's it's a bit difficult for me to say you know it will take a day or two because remember as we fill up reservoirs consumers are also consuming water so it's a bit difficult for me to say but it's it's i would say it's a couple of days because most areas do have water i think you mentioned so where you mentioned sentient earlier those areas i know for a fact that they are getting water and uh, there are parts in in Ekuruleni that are still struggling but we are sorting that one out obviously working with municipality when i'm saying we we work uh, together so it's 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 an it's not a, an, a big number of areas that i don't have water at the moment we are resolving the problem and we, we've come up with a solution water shifting Mm. Just lastly, before I let you go, maybe if we can uh, just share again those practical tips for residents as far as ensuring that, uh, you know, the water they do receive is safe for consumption and usage. I mean, we do see that, uh, you know, when water retains, sometimes it has milky or brown color and at times has brown grains in it. How can they ensure that uh, they are safe? You know, it is safe for drinking and also for preservation, if I may put it that way. Right. Uh, maybe let's start with quality. At Rainwater, we, we're very proud and we pride ourselves with the quality of water that we supply. It's above the national standards, so we, we do meet uh, those standards. We actually exceed those standards. So in terms of quality, you have nothing to worry about if you are using water from Rainwater. When it comes to water saving measures and tips, we are requesting and actually urging consumers and customers to turn off their taps when they brush, maybe brush your teeth, uh, repair leaking taps. Uh, if you have to use a sprinkler, obviously we spoke about like, the devil one between sunset and sunrise uh, because water evaporates. Cover your swimming pool if you have a swimming pool, water evaporates. Also install a, a low flow restriction on taps at home and ensure that when you water your garden, like I'm saying, it has to be sunset and sunrise, fix leaking pipes. Yeah, those are the some of the tips. And conserve water. Maganosi Maru, thanks very much for taking the time and joining us this evening. Much appreciated. That was uh, that was Makinosi Maru, the rainwater spokesperson, detailing the current situation regarding water supply in Houteng province at present, as we are seeing quite a lot of areas uh, that uh, their taps are running dry there. She's saying that, look, uh, the matter is, uh, you know, uh, at the top of the agenda, they will be able to resolve it. That's how we wrap it up for today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you. So please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Simply send us an email. It's Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can call or WhatsApp us at 081-531-8857. Machabal Kobola is up next with the latest uh, primetime news. From myself, Tabo Malukwani, and the rest of the team, good night and thank you for watching.